floor exercises for women involve three essential steps. And today I'm going to guide you through these three essential steps that you need to know to do your exercises correctly at home and get your best possible training results, particularly if you're a beginner just starting out. Hi, I'm Michelle, and today we're going through the three essential steps for doing pelvic floor exercises correctly. Now, as I've already mentioned, these exercises, or these three steps, are essential for doing your exercises correctly so that you've got the right technique from the outset. And this is what will give you the best strengthening and training results ultimately. So we're going to go through these three steps and I'll be going through those steps with you together so that by the end of the video you know exactly how to do them. And then we'll go through the three best positions. So stay with me for those, the three best training positions for actually progressing your strength training as you're exercising from beginner through to more intermediate and advanced. So let's get started straight away. We'll be doing the exercises both either lying down if you prefer to do them lying down or also so to sitting up in a chair and I'll be doing the exercises sitting in a chair with you so if you'd like to actually get into a chair now that would be great. So to do these exercises correctly, these pelvic floor exercises, you need to be able to first of all locate your pelvic floor muscles. So where you are sitting now, I want you to sit away from the back of the chair and just roll between your sitting bones side to side. Can you feel those bones? Now your pelvic floor muscles actually sit between those bones on the inside. And if you look at the pelvis, this is the pelvis, there's those bones underneath there, you can see them there. The muscles actually hammock underneath there. Okay, so they're like that. That's why they're called the pelvic floor muscles because they sit at the base of the pelvic floor. They also run from the pubic bone at the front to your tailbone. So you can feel that bone that's behind your vagina and the tailbone. They also run from front to back there. So they're filling up that space underneath there. So if you actually then sit and rock from side to side or in a circle, you can actually feel that you're sitting on those muscles. If you have a closer look at them like this, and I'll bring this close to you, you can actually see that the pelvic floor muscles here wrap around. So they're actually wrapping around um, the anus at the back. So you can see there. And you can also see how they wrap around the vagina. And also too, the urethra here, the urine tube, which is just in front of the vagina. So you can see in the red, they're all pelvic floor muscles and they sit in layers underneath. And you can see there's that pelvis like that. So that is what we're strengthening. Because they're on the inside, you can see that nothing should happen on the outside. So you shouldn't see your buttocks squeezing, your pelvis moving, nothing else should happen when you're doing these exercises correctly, which is what makes them a little bit tricky. So this is why we go through these three steps. The first step is to, well, sit away from the back of the chair, set yourself up for success so you've got nice tall posture. Think about the muscles around the anus. So the muscles that, are, that I just showed you encircling around the anus. Now we're gonna do two actions. It's a squeeze as if you're stopping gas from passing and also an inwards lift. So can you do that, but without tightening your buttocks? So the buttocks don't squeeze, the buttock muscles don't tighten, but just really isolate in and around the anus so that it squeezes closed, can you feel that? And then draws inwards, lifts up in towards your body and then see if you can lower it down. So that's step one. These muscles are called, their an anatomical name is levator ani, which means lift the anus. That's what these muscles do in part. The second step, is to do the same thing, squeeze and lift, but this time around the vagina. So this can be a little bit harder to feel, particularly if you're a beginner. So um, what you can do is you can use a towel roll to sit on, and you can see this pictured up above here. You can use it as a saddle. So you can basically roll it up, sit on it like a saddle, and that gives you a reference point to sit on, to lift away from when you're doing your exercises. So we're squeezing, around the vagina, we're lifting inwards, and then we're lowering down and relaxing. If you visualize pulling out a tampon and you're resisting that pulling, that's the action. So it's not just a squeeze, it's a squeeze and a lift inwards. And then most importantly, it's a relax and let go. So let's try that. Here we go, so nice and tall, normal breathing, go. Squeeze through the vagina, so squeeze, lift inwards, relax down, and let go. 
How did you go with that? Was that a little bit harder than perhaps doing the anus? Or did you find that both came on together? If they both, both, part, part, if both parts came on together, then that's fine too. That's something that you'd expect to happen. Now the third and final step is squeezing and tightening around the urethra. So this is where the urine comes out. So you can imagine that you're stopping um, the flow of urine as it's already started. So you can imagine stopping that and you could do that as a test occasionally if you wanted to test it out as well. But this is the third step. So squeezing and tightening around the urethra, the urine tube, which is just in front of the vagina. So squeeze and tighten if you can and relax it down and rest. So how did you go through those steps? Did you find that different parts came on together or they all came on at once? What we want is for all those parts to come on together because that is your complete pelvic floor exercise. So let's go through that, that's sort of our grand finale here, to activate our pelvic floor exercises correctly and do our correct pelvic floor exercise. So steps one, two and three all together. And sit nice and tall where you are, squeeze and lift, throw squeezing first up and then lifting up inside the anus, vagina and urethra all at once. Now see if you can keep your buttocks relaxed, your upper tummy relaxed and you're breathing normal, keep squeezing, keep lifting, relax and let go and that's the exercise. Now more might have already relaxed and let go and that's fine. Women find that they can do different amounts according to how strong their pelvic floor muscles are. So you might find you can do a one second hold at first or a three, four, five, even longer second hold. But most important that you're actually getting the technique right rather than your endurance. Now at the start I talked about some positions. Your starting position, your best starting position is lying down. Now this is because gravity or the muscles don't have to lift against gravity. If you're lying down, I showed you the pelvis before and the muscles sitting under here. If they're like that, you can imagine they're not having to work as hard as when they're in the upright position, which is what they normally are. So this is why lying down on your back or on your side or even on your tummy, if you feel that better, is a really great way to start if you're a beginner. Then you can progress to sitting or if you find that you can do your sitting exercises first up and even using the towel roll that I showed you, you can use that towel roll to progress to and then move the towel roll and do your exercises in sitting. Then when you can, advance to standing because standing position is the mus position the muscles really need to work out in. They're holding up the contents of your pelvis, your abdomen, and they have to work much harder in that position. So that's where you'll get really good strength training results from your pelvic floor exercises. So if you'd like a full workout, it's coming up next, a full pelvic floor training workout for when you're familiar with these exercises. Otherwise, I'd really like to thank you very much for watching today. I really hope that you found the exercises, the information beneficial. If you have, as always, if you could give it a thumbs up below because that encourages other women to watch the video too. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.